before we start, let me show you this. Look at the, wait a second. Check out this view. This is beautiful. This is actually the end of the day, so I'm not gonna do the video here. Recently, I've been thinking about and playing with some different things because I want to do a video on how to shoot an interview. And one of the things that I've been playing with is longer focal lengths. And one problem with longer focal lengths when you're filming yourself is that it puts the camera a little bit out of your reach. It's probably two arms length away. And that can be a problem when you're trying to change your ISO from 100 to 125 like I just had to do. But then the other problem is that the screen is a lot harder to see when it's six feet away than when it's two feet away. And now an external monitor would solve that problem, but it wouldn't solve the problem of what to do about changing your settings without having to get up and go to your camera, which isn't too big of a problem, except when you have a microphone in your way that you don't want to accidentally bump out of the sweet spot that you just got it set in or bump your head on the light that's sitting just above the lens really close to where your head is and so today i want to share with you two different ways that you can actually solve that problem where you can have a live view monitor or a remote control even when the camera is like six feet away from you. The first way is using the EOS utility with your PC. Now there should be a way that you can hook this up via Wi-Fi, but I actually have never been able to get that to work. Probably user error, but uh, just whenever I try and connect it over Wi-Fi, I always run into error messages and never, I can never get the computer to register with the camera. It's just a hassle. And so what I normally do when I'm using my computer as a live view monitor and remote control is plug it in via the micro HDMI port. And then you plug the other one into the USB port of your Windows or Mac computer. Now I don't actually know all of the stuff how this works for Mac because I've never actually used an iMac or MacBook or any of that. So I'll be talking exclusively about Windows, but I think it should be about the same for Apple. Now if you plug your camera into your computer, you want to make sure it's turned on on and on your camera screen you'll see a little computer icon open up the EOS utility 3 now this is very important if you open up the EOS utility 1 or EOS utility 2 it will give you an error message find your eu3.exe file folder and then I just pinned it to my taskbar in order to have that easily accessible. Open up the EOS Utility 3 and you'll see different options and what you want to choose is control your camera. Now what that does is it pulls up a little settings window and this just changes your settings but if you see here at the bottom it has a live view mode and so you can click on that button and it opens a big window with your live view and right there we have a nice large live view monitor still being able to access all of our exposure controls and with the computer, you can actually access your picture profile, which is something you can't do with the other option. And that is the Canon Connect app for smartphones. Now you can get this for both Apple and Android phones, and it works pretty much the same. Now connecting your smartphone to your camera is a different process. And you'll see under the HDMI and mini USB cables, there's a little button to open up your wireless settings. And you click that button, and then you can choose the different selections of what type of device, what type of connection you want to have. Click the smartphone and you go through the step-by-step -step instructions of how to connect the camera through the Wi-Fi to the phone. And then after you have that connection made, then you want to open up the Canon Connect app. And then you want to go into your remote shooting settings. And this is where the magic happens. And you can adjust all of your exposure values, your aperture, ISO, shutter speed. You can adjust your frame rate. You can adjust your focus modes. And if you want to use manual focus, like say you're shooting in the 4K mode, you don't want to use autofocus. What you can do with the app is you could turn off servo mode and it opens up another menu you where you have six different arrows that allow you to adjust your focus when using an autofocus lens in different increments. You can go down to the little settings icon and turn on double tap to magnify and then you're able to zoom in and use these arrows to adjust your focus and dial in your focus even when in 4k mode. And another thing that you have that you don't actually even have on the camera 
is you have audio meters. And so if you're trying to figure out while your camera's farther away from you, you're trying to adjust your audio like I was, you can actually change your audio levels on your camera and be able to just see right here that my audio levels are not peeking out. That is a reason in and of itself to use this app. Now there are a few problems with both the computer and the smartphone app. One of them is that the connection can be a little finicky. You can sort of fight to get it connected to the camera. But then once it's connected usually it works pretty well. The other problem is that it can be pretty laggy. The image itself just doesn't look smooth like it does on the back of your camera or with an HDMI monitor. But as long as you're not trying to use this like as a running gun, this is what I'm using for framing type monitor, either one of these is going to give you a lot easier of a time of adjusting settings and seeing what your adjustments are doing than just on the back of the camera six feet away from you. And those are the two ways that you can monitor your footage without having to buy a $200 monitor and you're able to access your settings, which that $200 monitor just can't do. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and because it was such a popular segment in my last video, I'm gonna show you how I actually shot this video. Right here I had the camera, as I said, with the 50mm f1.8 on the Viltrox speed booster, and that was how I got the framing I had. I had my light, if you see, the pole for it, and the light itself just out of frame, getting it as close to me as possible in order to give me the brightest, softest source that I could possibly have. Then I had my microphone right here, close to my mouth. It was about six to eight inches away, which is closer than I normally do, but I wanted to try that out. Behind me I had my camo shelf with my little lights with gels over top of them. And actually behind me I had doubled up the curtain in order to lower the exposure coming from the window. That is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.